Chris Delco, the Hellraiser is back. Here we go. Evolution of the Shield. John Cena versus the Showstopper. Hulk Hogan and The Rock in the same ring. You will never take my place at the head of the table. Undertaker on the Hell's Gate submission. Oh, my God. What? My God, Michaels just kicked Cena's head off. The Monday Night Wars has come to WrestleMania. It will be The Rock. It will be Austin one-on-one. Hey, what's going on, guys, and welcome back to WWE Retro on the WWE Podcast on this Friday, August 5th, as we are officially past SummerSlam season, on to Clash of the Castle season, and uh, I gotta say, it's gonna be really interesting to see a crowd over in the UK, especially with the main event scheduled to be the WWE Undisputed Universal Champion Roman Reigns defending his championship or championships, however you want to phrase it, against Drew McIntyre, who obviously is a son of Scotland, which is in the United Kingdom. So you have to imagine the crowd is going to be a hundred percent behind Drew McIntyre. But where we're going today is back in 2014, right up until early 2020. To cover the babyface run of Roman Reigns. And, you know, it's weird to sit here now about two and a half years removed from Roman Reigns' babyface run in WWE and realize all that he's accomplished since his return to the company just about two years ago at this time on at SummerSlam 2020 ultimately winning the Universal Championship at Payback 2020 in late August of 2020. I think I just said 2020 way too many times for one sentence, but you get the point. And, you know, I, for one, am kind of tired of Roman Reigns dominating the WWE landscape. I don't mind that he's on this historic run as Universal Champion. I think that him being WWE Champion is a thousand percent overkill, especially given the fact that he pretty much only appears on SmackDown and is a SmackDown competitor and is part-time to boot. And I cannot stand the fact that the entire main event championship picture has been hijacked by him. But all that being said, I would be absolutely inaccurate unless I completely admit how successful this heel run has been for Roman Reigns and that he is far and away aside from part-timers like Brock Lesnar and John Cena the biggest star WWE has going for it at this current moment now obviously when Randy Orton is healthy and on its main roster there's a case to be made that he is But the last two years have been the era of Roman Reigns. And it's kind of made us, maybe not forget, but not think about what we went through for the first six and a half years of Roman Reigns' single run post the Shield breakup in mid-2014. And if you rewind all the way back to 2012 when the Shield debuted, you always kind of knew that Roman Reigns was going to be the guy. And that's not a pun for when he said, I'm not a good guy, I'm not a bad guy, I'm the guy. But you always had that feeling. And personally, I always thought Reigns was going to be the babyface, Dean Ambrose was just going to be the top heel, and Seth Rollins would fall somewhere in the middle. Obviously, Roman Reigns was the top babyface, But Dean Ambrose never really realized himself as the top heel in the company, nor he should have been, because I think Dean Ambrose, up until his departure in early 2019, was one of the better babyfaces that WWE had going for itself. So we get Roman Reigns with the Shield for all of 2013 and into 2014, when we start feeling hints of a babyface turn for the group as a whole. And it would eventually come to a head in June of 2014, when the the group would finally reach a breaking point. In case you haven't figured it out yet, 
What I do better than anybody is adapt. Last night was plan A. Tonight, plan B. There's always a plan B. So Seth Rollins is heel turn on the shield, which effectively imploded the shield, was basically the beginning of Roman Reigns' main event push as a top tier babyface. And, you know, we got about a week or two where Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose stayed together as the shield. I remember the following week they came out and just destroyed three man band, which is funny now, given the fact that Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre specifically were in there just as jobbers. And now Drew McIntyre is facing off against Roman Reigns. What is it? Uh, eight years later for the Undisputed Championship at a major pay per view. But I digress. But this was the catalyst to get Roman Reigns into the main event of WWE on his own. And that was the plan. And the point about this is, is that it was working at the beginning. And that's the, uh, the crazy part about this. I remember going to a Monday Night Raw in July of 2014. And Roman Reigns came out to open the show. And the crowd really went crazy for him. I remember he came out, he cut a promo, and Kane came out to confront him, and they brawled into the crowd. And that night, it was post um, Seth Rollins winning Money in the Bank, and I believe the main event, John Cena was the world champion at this time, and I can't remember exactly what it was, but Roman Reigns and John Cena ended up in the ring together. And I believe it was a tag team match, like Roman Reigns and John Cena versus Orton and Kane, something like that. And then Seth Rollins came out to try and cash in, and uh, and uh, Dean Ambrose blocked his cash in. That was just around the time that when Dean Ambrose said his life's work was just to make Rollins' his life a living hell. And I remember it came down to, like, with Cena and, and Reigns, and as it went off the air the show and they were both celebrating the ring and people were booing Cena and cheering Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns was super over and then he gets hurt going into the fall of 2014 and he comes back right into the winter of 2015 and that is when things started to go really really south for Roman Reigns and the complete rejection of Roman Reigns' push to the main event as a top-tier babyface would come to an absolute head at the Royal Rumble in 2015. Giant <laughs>
a bit. Roman Reigns. Look at this sight. Roman Reigns and The Rock. It's all about WrestleMania. Yeah. Roman Reigns becomes just the 23rd man. And this would be known as the as the night that not even The Rock could save Roman Reigns. And it's funny, Daniel Bryan, or Brian Danielson actually, just spoke about this Royal Rumble on Renee Paquette's podcast, um, The Sessions, I believe it's called. And he talked about how when he got the, I guess, script, for lack of better terms, for this contest he told wwe creative like you shouldn't do this because it's going to go really bad for roman because of daniel bryan's popularity at that time and they went ahead with it i think that they figured that the rock was their ace in the hole that him coming in to intervene on behalf of roman reigns would same save him from a chorus of boos but not even the rock could save roman reigns from the absolute disgust of the WWE fans that night in Philadelphia. And he goes on to face Rock Lesnar in the main event of WrestleMania 31, one of the best main events I've ever seen. If you caught my show, I believe it was two weeks ago, for my top five WrestleManias, I had it ranked number four of all time for me personally. And to WWE's credit, they saved it. With the cash-in of Seth Rollins, the heist of the century, the best cash-in of all time, in my opinion, and I don't even think it's particularly close, and a fantastic way to really save a main event that nobody really wanted a clear-cut favorite in. You know, you had an absentee heel champion in Brock Lesnar, and you had a forced babyface contender in Roman Reigns, and they save it in uh, the cash-in of Seth Rollins. So they spend, you know, the later following that and following the 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 wrestle. My God, easy enough for me to say. Let me try it again. Following WrestleMania 31, they kind of started to shift Roman Reigns away from the main event picture. And to their credit, I guess they realized that they had to start building Roman Reigns in a different way. They had to take detach him from the main event and kind of put him down a more I guess, non-title program. He is involved in a fatal four-way match for the WWE Championship involving Orton, Rollins, and Dean Ambrose. Rollins obviously retaining. And then at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view in 2015, we have Roman Reigns in there. And a guy that many thought was a favorite to walk away from that match as the new Money in the Bank champion. And to this day, very interestingly... Roman Reigns has never held the Money in the Bank briefcase. And that's kind of a spoiler, because in this match, Roman Reigns would be attacked by Bray Wyatt. And that would kind of kick off a feud between the two guys that would span span all the way through the summer of 2015. You would have the match of him versus Bray Wyatt, I believe, at Battleground. Then a returning Luke Harper would get involved. Dean Ambrose would come to the aid of Roman Reigns. And then eventually leading to the debut of of one Braun Strowman. So Roman Reigns, along with Dean Ambrose, kind of get tied up in a feud with the Wyatt family all through 2015 summer. Then we get to the fall of 2015. And this is when Seth Rollins injures himself and has to relinquish the WWE Championship, which kicks off a tournament for to crown a new WWE champion. And during this, you kind of had Triple H, who was obviously the head of the authority, heel at this time, trying to coerce Roman Reigns into maybe taking the path of Seth Rollins and joining the dark side. And, well, for lack of better terms, join the dark side. And really kind of becoming a new corporate champion. And this tournament would culminate at Survivor Series... 2015 when it would come down to Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose to crown a new WWE champion. Roman Reigns gets the victory on Dean Ambrose only to be met by Triple H who came to the ring following his victory to meet him. (laughs) Sometimes when you come 
so close and you come so close and you finally get to the summit. It becomes so special. And here comes congratulations. Special congratulations from the balls. Uh, official congratulations from Triple H. So Sheamus cashes in money in the bank, the last time Sheamus would hold the world championship, I may add, and defeats Roman Reigns following Roman Reigns' first ever world championship victory. And look, at this time, it was clear for the fans that anyone but Roman is who they wanted. And it was funny because they played off that in the program between him versus Bray Wyatt, where Bray Wyatt would always say, anyone but you and this is kind of where we were at with Roman Reigns that the fans just wanted anyone but Roman Reigns in that main event role and it's tough here because you know you look at Roman Reigns at this time who his gimmick was basically still just the shield you know he kept the music he kept the entrance he kept the attire And they were just trying so hard to push him. And the fans just want nothing to do with it. And it was tough because this is where I think was a big crossroads opportunity for Roman Reigns. In the the sense that they could have switched Roman Reigns heel here. And look, there were plenty of opportunities for... Roman Reigns to change to um to turn heel but this was the opportunity for me somewhere along here it didn't have to be this night it could have been somewhere else down the road but during this point when Seth Rollins was out you had to turn Roman Reigns heel to become the corporate champion and it should have built towards him and Dean Ambrose to main event WrestleMania 32 Ambrose wins the Royal Rumble, and you have a Shield member versus a Shield member to main event the pay-per-view. That's the way it should have been. Ultimately, Roman Reigns would stay babyface, and he would win the championship back on an episode of Monday Night Raw, December 14th, 2015. A match that actually was pretty, pretty uh, well-received by the fans, I may add. Probably the only time that Roman Reigns would win the WWE Championship as a babyface that the crowd was incredibly behind him. So kudos to WWE with that. They were pulling out all the stops at this point to make Roman Reigns over as a babyface. You know, you had Vince McMahon come back and try and, you know, do everything to stack the cards against Roman Reigns with the League of Nations by the side of Dean, of, um, of Sheamus. You had... You had Vince interfere in that match a bunch with the refs and trying to distract the referees. He ends up eating a Superman punch. So for that night in December on Monday Night Raw, they get Roman Reigns over and the crowd behind him because of Vince just inherently as a heel. Then you go into January 
and it continues with Vince McMahon. There's a match with him as the special guest referee between Roman Reigns and Sheamus. And eventually, Vince's quest to dethrone Roman Reigns culminates at the Royal Rumble in 2016, when instead of the match being to for the main event of WrestleMania, it is actually for the WWE Championship, with Roman Reigns starting at number one. Triple H enters at number 30, wins the match to become the new WWE World Champion. This ultimately leads to to WrestleMania 32 with the main event of Triple H defending the championship against Roman Reigns. And, you know, like I said earlier, WrestleMania 32, and I've talked about this a lot, WrestleMania 32 was a massive botched opportunity in many respects. Uh, First of all, you know, Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker, a match that no one really understands why happened. You didn't have John Cena there. You didn't have Randy Orton there. You didn't have Seth Rollins there. You had Dean Ambrose versus Brock Lesnar, which on paper was supposed to be the match of the night. Obviously did not work out. By far the most underwhelming match on the card. And then you had one of the most rejected main events in history of Triple H versus Roman Reigns for the championship. And like I said, this should have been Roman Reigns versus... Dean Ambrose with Roman as a heel. And you know what? Even if you wanted to make it babyface versus babyface, fine. I just think you would have been better off as a heel because people are so behind Ambrose at this time and so against Roman Reigns at this time. And it would have been a money main event. And the fact that not, none of the Shield members have faced off against each other at WrestleMania is embarrassing. You know, I remember in this very same year at Battleground 2016, you had a triple threat match between the three for the WWE Championship. That is a main event worthy match at a WrestleMania. And a blow miss opportunity at WrestleMania 32. Roman Reigns wins the WWE Championship and they continue plugging along with this Roman Reigns babyface character. And he holds the title all the way until Money in the Bank 2016. And a returning Seth Rollins leading into that pay-per-view challenges him for the title that he never lost. They face off against one another. Seth Rollins dethrones Rowan Reigns as the WWE champion. And then Dean Ambrose cashes in with the Money in the Bank briefcase he had won that night to become the new WWE champion against Seth Rollins. Then, this is when we see a big separation between Roman Reigns and the title picture. As the draft comes, Dean Ambrose takes the championship over to SmackDown. Rollins and Reigns end up on Monday Night Raw. Raw gets the brand new Universal Championship. Roman Reigns does not win the the, the championship as the inaugural guy neither as Finn Balor won it and then the secondary inaugural guy when Kevin Owens would win a tournament uh the night or two after money uh, after uh, SummerSlam I believe it was like the week after SummerSlam and in the early on era of this new brand split you have Roman Reigns kind of detach from the main event scene as you have him have a pretty lengthy feud with Rusev and he wins the United States Championship which was, I guess, a good way to kind of get Roman Reigns away from the WWE Championship, away from the main event. But at this point, you had Roman Reigns as the same guy, the same character for three years going into 2017, or I guess it was about two and a half years at this point, and the crowd was just rejecting it. And the thing is, is yes, WWE had gotten Roman's away, Roman Reigns away from, from the WWE Championship picture. But the problem is, is you're still pushing the guy in a main event capacity. And this ultimately leads to his match to main event in a non-title contest, to main event WrestleMania 33 against The Undertaker. Now, this is three years in a row now that Roman Reigns is main eventing the show. Um, This is back-to-back years where it's a very predictable outcome. Where, you know, everyone knew he was going to be Triple H for the championship at in at WrestleMania 32. 
And, I mean, I guess you could make the case that Undertaker, you know, he had only lost one match at WrestleMania to this point. Is he going to beat Roman Reigns? It was arguably the worst Undertaker match in the history of WrestleMania. He himself has said that he was not ready uh, for this match in terms of, uh, from a physical standpoint. And it was a disaster. A really, really bad match. Roman Reigns wins. The crowd goes off the show really pissed off. You know, the pay-per-view closes out with everyone booing the shit out of Roman Reigns. Pardon my language. And... I mean, it was just WWE forcing a square peg into a round hole once again. And the following night on Monday Night Raw, when Roman Reigns would open the show, was kind of a microcosm of the entire Roman Reigns babyface push. So Roman Reigns, this actually went on for almost 10 minutes um, with the crowd just going absolutely ballistic on him. You know, this, I I think WWE has played with this clip a bit because the boos, I remember, were just absolutely deafening. And, you know, it, it was just a microcosm of WWE almost acknowledging fully transparently, saying like, we know you hate this guy, but we're pushing forward with him. And, I mean, I guess credit to them for sticking to their guns, but I mean, you're almost three years into this, and there's just a complete rejection here. And, you know, I know they tried the thing when he became the champion the year before, where he was saying, I'm not a good guy, I'm not a bad guy, but I'm the guy. Like, they were just trying every which way to kind of position him as a non-top-tier babyface, but at the same time, like well, he's, like, our guy, like, he's the guy of the future, this, that, and the other thing, and by him just coming out just to a rain of booze, people absolutely despising him, I mean, credit to him, but I don't know how he did it, um, so, 
2017, he gets back into the title picture for a bit, you know, a, a fatal four-way match to main event SummerSlam 2017 against uh, Braun Strowman, Samoa Joe, and Brock Lesnar. In early 2017, he had a, kind of had an on-and-off feud with Braun Strowman. Then he kind of has a feud with Samoa Joe in late 2017, wins the Intercontinental Championship, then also in 2017, you have his short program with John Cena in the War of Words, where he got absolutely torched by Cena. They have the match at No Mercy, which Roman Reigns obviously wins. You have the return of the Shield in October of 2017, and Roman Reigns actually gets suspended for violating the wellness policy. But again, you try and position him in a way to try and get some cheers. They were trying everything possible to get get Roman Reigns on the good side of fans from having him feud with big time heels like Joe and Braun Strowman to going up against a guy like John Cena who had been historically rejected by the crowd to putting him back with Rollins and Ambrose as the shield you know making him a mid-card champion intercontinental they were trying everything in 2017 to get the fans to somehow try and like this guy and unfortunately it just was not working So much so is that by the time you get to 2018 and it's time for Roman versus Brock 2.0, the crowd is just like, are you effing kidding me? We're here again with Roman Reigns for the fourth straight WrestleMania main event in the show, three out of four years challenging for the WWE championship and the second time in four years going up against Brock Lesnar. And, you know, again, this match completely rejected at main event of WrestleMania 34. The crowd wants nothing to do with it, and he ends up losing to Brock Lesnar, a a call that apparently was made at the 11th hour by Vince McMahon. Obviously, there's the clip of Brock Lesnar being super pissed off and throwing the belt at Vince as he walks through Gorilla. They would have a series of more matches in... in, um, you know, early to mid-2018, they have the steel cage match in Saudi Arabia at the Greatest Royal Rumble main event, and this ultimately culminates between Brock and, um, Brock and Roman at SummerSlam 2018, when Roman Reigns would win the Universal Championship. And, I mean, at this point, I was at kind of, I, I was kind of at a mental point in 2018, where I was saying, like, you know, you're positioning Roman Reigns as this guy. You might as well make him one of the world champions. You know, he just came off of a program against a returning Bobby Lashley following his uh, loss to Brock in Saudi Arabia, where he, you know, defeats Bobby Lashley. I believe that was at Extreme Rules. And it was just always coming back to the fact that all roads lead to Roman Reigns, to quote Matt. And... I was kind of getting to the point where it's just like, look, if you're going to push this guy as the main event all the time, you might as well put the championship on him. And they make that call in the summer of 2018, defeats Brock Lesnar, the first time he holds a world championship since the summer of 2016. So to their credit, they kept the world titles off of him for two years. But then shortly thereafter, he has to relinquish the championship to leukemia. And, you know, he he's away for four months, and obviously that, that supersedes wrestling. That's more about the guy, the person, Joe Inoue, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm probably not. But, I mean, when he lost that championship bec- and had to relinquish it because of cancer, it kind of brought a new perspective on how fans have viewed Roman Reigns, because now you're also taking the person into this. And relinquishes the universal title goes back onto Brock Lesnar he comes back just in time for Wrestlemania season 2019 February or so he does the final you know get together with the shield they have their their program against Corbin and Drew and Lashley has the match against Drew at Wrestlemania 35 defeats him and then in res- in 2019 Roman Reigns is kind of back in the same old position as not the world champion, but at the forefront of a lot of main event stuff with, you know, his pro on and off program against Shane McMahon and his lackeys, predominantly Drew McIntyre, 
The Undertaker returns to tag with him against Drew and Shane McMahon. And upon his return from cancer, I think that a lot of the people who absolutely detested Roman Reigns at this point just stayed quiet, where when he came out, you'd either have cheers or just not a whole lot of anything, because you weren't going to boo the guy who just overcame leukemia in, what, three or four months, but at the same time, you still absolutely hated his character. So how are you supposed to treat this? And, I mean, in 2019, during the summer, that's when the wild card rule was part of this, and it felt like every single Raw and every single SmackDown opened with either him or Shane McMahon and that whole program. And, you know, you had Seth as the Universal Champion on Raw, Kofi as the WWE Champion on SmackDown, and it just felt like Roman Reigns was always that much more important. Fox comes into the fold. The uh, the brand split is again enforced in a hard capacity. He goes over to SmackDown, kind of becomes the face of SmackDown going into the Fox era and has his final program as a babyface. And now think about this. We're five years in now into the post-Shield Roman Reigns. And he has the never-ending feud with King Corbin, which ultimately culminates with Obviously, Roman Reigns getting the best of King Corbin that lasted pretty much like three or four months with November, December, January, like it was just on and on and on and on. And at the Saudi Arabia event, we have Goldberg defeat the Fiend to become the un- the new Universal Champion leading into WrestleMania. And it was time for the Goldberg to meet his opponent, for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania 36. It's all about who's next. And you got it, Roman Reigns would just come out to reveal himself as the new number one contender for Goldberg's Universal Championship heading into WrestleMania 36, a match that, I mean, if there's one good thing to come out of COVID, and there's pretty much nothing, and I wish never it happened like everyone else, and it sucks, and it's ruined the last two and a half years, but the fact that we never got to see this match at WrestleMania 36 was a good thing. Um... There was no interest, at least from my perspective, for this match. Because, for one, why the hell is Goldberg the guy to finally defeat the Fiend and pin him for the first time with a botched jackhammer that pretty much came off like a suplex? And Roman Reigns becomes the number one contender because Goldberg asks who's next and he just walks out and presents himself. And Roman Reigns versus Goldberg... No, thank you. But obviously, COVID hits. Roman Reigns pulls out of WrestleMania. And this is the last time we would ever see Roman Reigns as a babyface. And look, I mean, there was a lot of bad, a little good. But after covering it all, after that, it was dreadful five and a half years of Roman Reigns as the top babyface in the post-Shield era. I think we could all resoundingly say, thank God he was turned heel. And even though I think WWE is exaggerating right now, and I think that they would be best served to maybe pull back a bit on Roman Reigns, you know, take at least one of the championships off of him. I think that all in all, especially when you look back on what his babyface run was like, we are very happy that they came to their senses and turned him heel because as we just covered for the last 30, 35 minutes or so, this was a really unfortunate period for Roman Reigns for about five and a half years from mid-2014 to early 2020. 
Well, anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope that you enjoyed the babyface run of Roman Reigns. As always, you can get me on Twitter at Adamarco25. You can get Matt on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Audio. Or you can email him each and every week for the WWE mailbag. Anyway, guys, stay safe out there. Enjoy your weekend. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to WWEPodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to Patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.